Hello and welcome to another episode of the Just Ask Vent Show. Today we're going to be starting on a three-part series of load releasing hitches. The one we're going to tie today is the radium load release hitch and I'm going to be accompanied today by Sean Haynes, a fire and rescue training specialist with North Carolina Officer State Fire Marshal. This is a fairly simple uh, hitch to tie and it's the radium load release hitch. You're going to need about 30 feet of accessory cord and in the end of it we're going to tie a figure eight on a bite. This is going to attach to a carabiner and this carabiner will actually need to attach to the load. The carabiner that Sean has is actually going to be attached to the anchor. At this point Sean's going to take the accessory cord and he's going to pass through his carabiner and we're going to come back and pass through my carabiner. Now he's going to tie a munter hitch onto the carabiner at the anchor. This gives us the basis for the, for the system. Now he's going to form a bite and he's going to tie just a, a half hitch and he's going to secure it off with a, a second half hitch or an overhand. And this completes tying the radium load release hitch. Once you've completed tying the radium load release hitch, you're going to attach it to the belay line using tandem triple wrap prusiks. What we have set up here is the blue line is going to represent our main line that we're lowering with. The red line is going to re represent our belay line. At this point, we would begin the lowering operation and I would have to mine these prusiks. And at some point, if the load was to fall and it was to grab, what we have done is we haven't taken our main line totally out of the operation, but what we have done is we've loaded the tandem triple wrap prusiks. And once the prusiks are loaded, it's very difficult to unlock them. That's the purpose of the radium load release hitch. Now that the belay line has actually loaded, Sean is going to demonstrate the proper procedure for utilizing the radium load release hitch to transfer the load back onto the main line. Sean's untying the overhand and half hitches while always being mindful of keeping tension on the tail end of the radium load release hitch, that accessory cord, because that is the braking hand. Vince, is it my understanding that this system works by you're, you've got the figure eight not going to the load, it comes up and the rope comes up and makes a bend around and then makes another bend down here and you've got three strands of rope actually supporting the load as opposed to a single strand? Yeah, that's correct. We're using smaller accessory cord in this radium load release hitch and by distributing that load across three strands, we're still well within our safe working load. It also, using this small accessory cord, gives us a little bit of a dynamic feature so when the shock load is absorbed, the prusiks, the rope, and the radium load release hitch all absorb that energy and dissipate it across the system. Now what Sean's going to do is he's going to demonstrate actually working the radium load release hitch while the load is on the belay line. And as he does this, the slack is going to start to form in this belay line, which means the load is transferred back onto the main line. It's not necessary to release this the full distance. All we're looking for is enough release to allow me to break the prusiks loose so we can collapse the system. And when I say collapse the system, we're going to take this radium load release hitch back down to its narrowest point so that if we have another situation, we will have plenty of rope to work with to lower the load and transfer it back on to the main line a second time. Sean, would you demonstrate this? And one way to do this is to pull all the rope back through both carabiners from your eight all the way back through, which can be cumbersome, but it also keeps your system together. Another way to do this is to simply take your munter hitch out of your carabiner, but at that point, you're actually releasing the whole system from its integrity. At this point, just like he did the first time, Sean's gonna form a bite and in that bite, he's going to tie a half hitch and an overhand to secure the radium load release hitch. Now the system is reset and we're ready to begin the lower again. 
And if something were to happen, we could go through the same, same procedure as many times as we had an issue. And that concludes this episode of the Ask Vent Show on the radium load release hitch. Join us again next time when we cover how to tie and utilize the Mariner's hitch.